I'm Marcus Atkins. I live in Coburn, Virginia. Did you grow up here? I grew up here. I've lived here all my life. You tell us about your family? Uh, my dad passed away about uh, 20 years ago with uh, cancer. Uh, my mom, she's 89 now. She's uh, she's a diabetic. Which I got two or three sisters that's diabetic, and uh, I've got type two diabetic. You know how your family came to this area? <sighs> uh, well, my dad's originally from Grundy, but my mom's originally from this area, and uh, he just moved here. I guess he come here, you know, to work in the coal business. He'd worked for. Uh, Punchfield Co Company most of his life until he retired. What was it like growing up with your dad in the coal business? Uh, you know, it was it was tough back then, you know. Uh, they didn't make the kind of money that they make now and uh, which uh, you know he kept food on the table, you know, clothes on our back and place to live. What about the coal industry now today? You're... It's bad. It's this is what it is exactly. Yeah, yeah. Talk about the coal industry now. And say you know the coal industry today is. It's it's bad. Start, start by saying the coal industry today is. Oh, the coal industry today, it's real bad. They've, uh, I've got a lot of friends that's laid off, and besides my friends, you know, there's thousands and thousands of people around this area, close, you know, uh, Virginia, Kentucky, and West Virginia that the mines is shut down and the strip jobs is shut down uh, and they just ain't no other jobs out there. Why? Well, the only thing going on around this area, you know, you got the prison, uh, you got the Red Onion prison and Walland Ridge prison and uh, everything is left this area. They just ain't nothing left. people uh, are people hurting people's hurting bad around this part of the country they they really are they just and their unemployment's running out for most of them you know and and they they don't have nothing you know after that there's nothing a lot of people's leaving this part of the area but it's just bad around here you know it's causing the coal mines to shut down they say that it's the EPA what, uh, can you start by telling us uh, saying the coal, why the coal mines are shutting down? They say the coal mines are shutting down because the EPA is getting so strict on them that the, uh, uh, the power plants can't burn the coal without getting fined real big. So there are, most of the uh, coal power plants is switching over to gas. How do you feel, since you're from this area, how do you feel when uh, outsiders are critical of the strip mines? Well, you know, people that ain't from around this area, they don't understand this is our way of life, you know. And you look at most of, like this place right here, you know, it's been stripped and it's, uh, uh, it just helps the area a lot, you know, give places to build homes and stuff and build, uh, um, they build parks, you know, and stuff on them, and place to raise cattle and stuff around here. That's, that's about all there are left. What are your hopes? Uh, <laughs> you can start by saying my hopes. My hopes are that they, you know, they lighten up on the regulations on the EPA where the East Coast fire, power plants can. Uh, start burning coal again, you know, and put a lot of people back to work around this area. Sorry, once again, what do you do with the coal industry? I haul coal into the power plant over at St. Paul, Virginia. Yes, any questions? Are you guys, uh, are you guys shut down now? Uh, yes. Yeah, talk, talk, talk to Jeff. Yeah, okay. Say, say, say that, well, I was working, why don't you say, I was working till whenever, but now we're, Sort of sh now I'm shut down, stuff like that. I was working till uh, hauling coal into the power plant over to Virginia City, and uh, they shut down twice a year to do repairs. So we've been down since uh, around about the first of April, and we're supposed to start back the now on the 12th of May. 
haul them back in there. They're supposed to be powered back up, we hope. So, so thanks for helping on this here. How, <laughs> how come this is important, this uh, mobile health van? What, what does that mean to the community? Tell well, me about Jeff. Uh, this health wagon here, you know, it's uh, if it wasn't for this health wagon, there's a lot of people around this area couldn't get to uh, help, you know, the ones that's sick and got uh, diabetes and uh, heart disease and stuff, you know. Uh, if it wasn't for the health wagon, you know, that people around here, they couldn't get their medicine or nothing, you know. They can't, you, you can't afford to go see a doctor because it, or it costs so much, you know, if you don't have insurance and, you know, if you're laid off, you can't afford insurance. So that's why the health wagon exists? Yeah, that's why it's, it helps a lot of people, it sure does. What were you helping us with today? Talk to us about that. So they, they're a little... They, they too had struggled probably for money and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yes. Talk about that, say. Talk uh, to Jeff about yep. that. Uh, I come and help them every now and then on the bus. Like, it wasn't cranked today. I had to come up and help them get it cranked up. Uh, and, you know, sometimes I'll help them. I'll go move the bus for them if they need me to or work on it to get the... It, they're, they're struggling, too, you know. They need the help. Uh, Donations and stuff helps a lot, you know, for them. Uh, they're just a wonderful bunch of people. They sure are. Why couldn't the bus work? <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's just wore a plumb out, you know. You just I had no, to break. Wait, could you say that the bus is uh, water plumb out? The the bus that they're in right now is wore a plumb out, you know. It's it's getting old and uh, it's moved around so much it. Uh, uh, I had to bridge the starter over to get it to crank this time and had to pick on the the pumps to get the, the walls to move out 